Hello everyone, welcome to this episode of Mega After Dark. I'm too pale for professional lighting. We're doing something you've been requesting for a very long time. That is an Affinity Designer tutorial. Yes, not a speed drawing, a tutorial. So today I'm making this little cartoon character that I think, hope, pray for, you'll enjoy. Uh, I didn't have a plan, as you can see from the title of the file. I had no clue what I was doing and I just kept going. So that's what we're doing today. Uh, what I did first was building a skeleton. So like I said, I didn't have a plan, I didn't have a sketch. So the first thing that you kind of like want to do is to make sure that you have an idea of the general shape that you're going for. For example, an artist would very likely make the outline of something before making the details. So that's what we're doing. We're just making it digitally because why pick up a pencil when you can just do it on your screen. So we're making those shapes using a bunch of strokes and shapes that are just outlined with no filling. And we're done with the overall dynamic of the cartoon character, whatever you're making. Uh, then you can actually start building the shapes. So I'm starting with the eyes. I usually start with the eyes just because it's the most expressive part of the face, the body if there's a face. Um, and especially here, they're pretty big, <laughs> so um, that's going to be kind of like the highlight and the starting point of the whole style that this character is going to have. So I'm starting with that, and to do that, I have a first circle that I fill with white, and I'm adding the pupil, iris, I guess that's iris technically, um, with another circle. So that circle has a gradient because it's me, we're putting gradients everywhere. And that gradient goes to gray, just because at the beginning when I don't know what color I want, I usually go with black and white and then I add colors, um, just to have an overall idea of, of the shape instead of focusing on the color. So when that's done, I'm adding with the pen tool a bunch of little shapes that would be, you know those anime eyes with a bunch of lights being reflected by the eye? That's what I'm going for, because I want it to be extra cute. So I want him to have like, or her, I don't know. Um, I want it to have very expressive, bright eyes. Um, so that's why I'm, that, that's why they're here. Uh, when I am done with that, I'm adding a moon shape. The way I do this moon shape is two circles, one smaller than the other, and then I'm using the Pathfinder to remove the matter or the area that I don't really need. That's Pretty simple, but if you're new to vector work, that's super important. You're gonna use that a lot, pretty much all the time. Um, so yeah, Pathfinder is something that enables you to add, remove, combine, extrude shapes. And when I'm done with that moon shape thing that goes in the eye, I am I'm adding a blur to it just because it has to kind of merge with the rest of the eye because it's more like a highlight more than actual part of the eye so it is blurred with blur that is in the effects we're gonna use that a lot so blur in the effects um after that i'm actually adding a gradient to that specific shape just because i want it to be more immersive and a little more not even photorealistic it's just more visually appealing so gradient added Second part, I am doing the same thing I just did with the moon shape, except that I'm doing that for the actual white part of the eye. The reason for that is that I want it to have more volume and I'm gonna make this specific shape gray and again, blur, always blur. When I'm happy with my eye, what do you think I'm doing? I'm copying and pasting because we're lazy here. Actually, no, we're efficient. We're not lazy, we're efficient. So we're making a second one and because obviously the second eye is further away from the closer first eye, it's gonna be smaller. So scaling that down and moving on to the rest of the face. I'm picking up the shape that I actually made, um, like that circle that I made at the beginning and I am transforming that into curves just because I need to pick up those um, two little points in order to make them more... I basically want the face to look like a flat egg. So that's what we're going for. And that's why we turn it to curves because by default a circle 
cannot have their lines edited. So you need to convert it to curves before doing anything to it. When I'm done with that, what do you think I'm doing? Gradient, again, adding a gradient from that dark peachy red, whatever color, to a more creamy peach. This video is not going well. So now back to the eyes. The eyes, I really want them to have a specific room on the face and to make them really pop. So what I'm starting to do is adding a drop shadow, but you can't really just add a drop shadow because the goal of a drop shadow is to push the content away from whatever surface it's on. And you don't want, you know, a pair of eyes just floating around in the middle of the face. So to avoid that, I'm actually having another circle behind those eyes just to have something that contains the shadow after I'm done with those shapes. And next is the nose. The nose is a custom shape, a custom triangle, you might say. And it is dark brown. And I'm adding the exact same highlights that I have in the eyes on the nose because it's a shiny nose. What do you want me to tell you? And I'm editing those shapes just because I want them to be more, to be more appropriate to the actual shape uh, they're applied to. The ears, the ears are not really fancy it's just two ears um <laughs> in which there's another shape as you can see here uh that is being blurred again just just for the volume purposes and what i'm doing now is i'm actually picking the color um that's closer to the bottom edge of my ear and i'm picking the color of the face just because i want the ear to blend a little bit more with the the rest of the face and that way I'm gonna have some parts of the ears that are gonna be really detached from the face and a middle part that is really blended together. And same thing that we just did with the eyes, copy and paste. So now the mouth. The mouth was kind of interesting. Look at this, look at this. Now tell me, tell me you're not gonna have nightmares about this guy. So now that I'm actually okay-ish with the creep level of the mouth, I am using the pressure characteristic, the pressure tool, use the pressure button. <laughs> so here it's thicker in the middle and just very thin the edges. And I'm, I'm making this mouth uh, a lighter color because it's a little harsh when it's black. Uh, and it also, you know, emphasizes the creep factor. So now whiskers, I am editing the pressure of the whiskers just to make them more little, you know, organic looking and copy and paste edit the shape copy and paste edit the shape copy and paste three of them again lazy factor so now the body i'm actually redoing the entire body just because i didn't want to um edit those vectors because they were very sketchy so i recreated the shape and i'm adding a gradient to it again because welcome to my channel and now it becomes interesting now is a time where i'm kind of confused about if that position is the best position that's what she said no meg no so i am actually you know moving around the bod to see where it goes i'm floating i'm floating and showcasing my butt so now i'm adding a little belly like if you remove that shape you can be like where's the belly button i don't know if you add the belly you can really see like in what specific nonchalant position the character is in what are we doing next? You know what we're doing next. We're adding a little bit of a shadow to make it more plump, more voluminous, more round. Uh, and to do that, again, we're making a new shape. We're not using inner shadow. We're using a new shape that is going under the belly, not the belly, the body layer. Um, so it's cropped. And we are adding a blur to that shape again. So now the arm. And now I'm doing something that's a little bit different from what I just did with the body. I'm actually using an inner shadow just because the shape works perfectly for this. And I'm adding a gradient. Again, you add your inner shadow, you can still edit the content of the, the actual shape. You can still do whatever you want. And I am adding a two stop gradient. Yes, two stop gradient. Fairly simple. I'm adding another shape. Uh, that becomes the end of the arm because cute and um, like I just said 
I use the arm to be the mask of the end part of the, the paw. Second arm, copy and paste, edit the shape so the perspective works. So the foot, <laughs> copy and paste the first arm. <laughs> the only difference that I have here is that I am turning this gradient into a three stop gradient and the top color, so the top of the foot, uh, becomes transparent. Like I put the opacity to zero just because I want it to blend with the rest of the body um, the exact same way that I did with the ear. So there we go, we're done with the foot. And second foot. You know what we're doing, copying and pasting. What is left? The tail is left. Let's make the tail. It's a custom shape, again, um, that is a layer that's under, under the body and the feet, obviously. I am adding a gradient. See, this is why I'm not making tutorials. It's always the same thing that I'm repeating. There's no magic here. It's just it's the same thing over and over again. So again, gradient, drawing a shape that will be a blurred shape to act as a shadow or a dimension bearer. For the end of the tail, I'm doing the same thing I did for the paws. I am drawing a circle and I'm placing the circle inside of the um, tail layer that is not named tail. I didn't name any layers here. I apologize. I'm, I'm realizing this now. And since this video is 4K, you can, you can really see in detail how messy I can be. But in my defense, this tutorial took about, I believe, less than an hour. Like making it took less than an hour. So it's, it, you know, that's why. So at this point, I'm wondering, this character is too cute. What can he be? Like, it's just, it's me, you know? It's not gonna carry a bouquet of flowers. It's not gonna bring joy to the world. It's gonna have something really deeply wrong or really, you know, scary. It's just to make it more interesting. And then it hit me, a tax auditor that comes to your house and be like, you are being audited. And that's when it hit me that I can actually use this character as a 404 page informer. So we're making this page next week as a full tutorial, same format as this one, with Webflow. So if you never used Webflow in the past, um, it is a website builder. And if you have any comments about the format, about anything really, uh, leave it in the comments. I'd be really happy to see what you're thinking of this. And I will see you like I said, next week with a Webflow tutorial. This is Editing Meg. I always forget to invite you to click on my end screens, so I'm, I'm gonna wait here until you do so. You're here. Pick whatever you want. Have you done it yet? No, you haven't. If you're still here and you haven't clicked yet, click on one.